Hello, unique soul, and welcome to another Mystic Moon Tree video. My name is Stephanie Samarusti, and I am a holistic crystal energy healer, herbalist, and um, natural healer. Um, I also am a sensitive and tarot reader, and I do practice Reiki and several other forms of alternative healing. Um, if you see my videos before, um, you'll know that they all have a little specific subject that we're focusing on and um, this video will specifically be about my product um, not all of the products that i carry at mystic moon tree that you can find um, on my online store um, at www.mysticmoontree.com or https uh, colon forward slash forward slash and then it's mystic-moon-tree.square.site is the actual store. If you're not able to navigate to it um, from my main website, I will post the links um, to my store and to my main website um, in the comments uh, below this video um, so that you can find any of this lovely product that I make if you're interested in it after you watch the video. So thanks for joining me. This specific video is going to be not about all of the products that I carry, but about the specific products that are my particular custom blends, my product that I make from scratch using um, holistic herbs or um, different um, alchemical waters and natural spring waters and just all sorts of different ingredients. Um, so if you have any questions about anything specific after you watch this video, um, we're going to go really in depth. This is going to be a long video. It may be an hour, it may be two hours long. So um, just uh, bear with me while I ramble. I tend to go off on tangents. Um, I'm going to try to focus on different groups of my products and then go into really specific detail about all of my products and all of their individual uses. Um, yeah, and so if you want to know more about any specific subject, then you want to watch a different video. If you want to learn more about herbalism in general, or you want to learn about crystals and crystal healing, tarot, um, my sensitivities, other subjects about like um, wild crafting and, and um, hunting for herbs, things like that, then you want to tune into a different video. This video is going to be all about my specific product. At the very end, I'm going to talk about some of my products that are kind of in beta testing that um, I use personally, but I haven't like perfected them for launch in the store. So they may not be on the shop. So if there's anything that you see mentioned on here that you want that you can't find on my store, since I'm just one person, I don't have any employees. I'm just a little small town herbalist making all of these remedies and concoctions. Um, if they're not on the store yet, they're like a work in progress for me to get to get containers, to get packaging, to get labeling, so that they're easy, easily accessible for you guys, my clients. Um, if you don't see them there, just call me, message me, drop me a message on whatever post you see this video at. And instead of it being like easy, like a lot of the modern day stuff, when you're working with an herbalist, sometimes you just have a little have to have a little friendship with us and let us know what it is your needs are so that if we have some kind of product that's not quite out there into the launch phase and out there on our shops we can still custom make something for your individual needs so I'm happy to do that for you or if you see something shown on here that you have trouble finding on the shop um, just give me a little message and I'll make sure we can get one out to you so um yeah, definitely. Um, some of the things that I need to mention um, before I jump into talking about my product today is that um, due to regulations in our country, which I'm not going to get into in a lot of depth in vi this video, um, I have to say that herbal remedies and using herbs, um, I can't recommend that you take herbs internally, although a lot of people do. They've been taken traditionally for um, some of them 3,000 years back into antiquity by folk and indigenous societies. I take the ones that are safe to take internally um, and even medicinally internally myself. And so I'll just be um, giving you guys a little bit of insight into how I use these products, but I can't recommend that you take anything internally. I also can't say that these treat or cure any medical disease. Uh, legally, I just 
Um, I have to mention that, that they have been used to support healing of certain ailments um, by indigenous and traditional societies, um, but I can't claim that, that they actually will cure a disease. Um, legally, I just can't do that. So um, yeah, aside from that, if you choose to take herbal remedies, they can be a huge beneficial part of your life, switching to natural products. I want to talk a little bit about why I suggest switching to natural products and how you can do it safely. Um, so that you don't get into trouble with um, herbs that are something that we consider a medicinal herb, and I'll get into that in just a second, but um, why you could potentially cause any harm to yourself with something that is termed an herb. So um, I have lots of different categories of products, so I think what I want to start out with is just what is an herb, and when I'm talking about herbs and herbal products and natural products and holistic products, um, what are the concepts behind that before we dive right into specific products? So basically an herb is anything that comes from the natural kingdom, usually a plant or fungus. Sometimes it can be something considered something mineral um, or an, uh, something organic or not non-organic that comes from the earth, but in most cases you're talking about something that comes from a plant specifically. Um, and that has been processed in whatever way tries to hold on to the most natural and complete principles of that individual substance so that it has very little processing and it doesn't lose its spiritual aura that's around it because what we're really trying to do with a lot of my products is, is support your energy field around your your body, your aura around your body in a holistic way that hopefully vibrates down into the manifest world to help support um, natural body healing and Western medicine um, in healing your body. So, um, yeah, so herbs are usually a form of plant that has been prepared in a certain way that is extracted certain principles from it in a non-concentrated way. So it's not like chemistry. It's not like getting a drug from the store where they have found one constituent out of thousands of constituents in an herb to concentrate and extract just that one little tiny substance and then make it really, really potent. So it has this just like almost punch your body um, effect to slam it back into a state that it thinks will be beneficial for your health. Sometimes Western medicine works very well in, um, in acute emergency situations and with pain and like you're about to die kind of situation. Western medicine works really well to just kind of slap that negative thing um, out of your body um, so that you have a chance to overcome whatever's going on with you. Um, but that can tend to cause your body is a very delicately balanced machine and um, we are part of the plant world and part of the animal world and just part of the earth and everything in earth has a specific harmonious balance including your body including your aura without getting too in detail on those concepts when you use um a lot of Western medicine and a lot of Western products that have gone through industrialization, they tend to be very concentrated, very strong, and they can very easily throw our aura and our physical body out of balance because they don't have a subtle effect. They don't have a balanced effect with other constituents being um, blended in with them um, to to not cause mass chaos and disruption in your body. So even though um, Western chemicals and Western medical like drugs and pharmaceuticals and things like that can be very beneficial um, when you're in a, in a major emergency crisis state to bring you back to health and even to maintain certain um, conditions that you might be dealing with, they can also cause a lot of side effects, I guess, is the word that they use in the Western side of things. They cause a lot of side effects and a lot of imbalance in our system. So holistic medicine and holistic products, their goal is to um, take into effect or take into account 
not just the symptom, not just the localized problem that you're having, but the big world, like overall picture of your entire being, not just your physical body, but also your mind, your mental state, your emotional state in your heart, um, and your emotions that vibrate into your aura or your energy field or your spirit, and that insubstantial something that is around us, whether it be your, your magnetic field, the heat and light that comes off of your body and the actual spiritual interactions that you have with the world around you um, that you don't see with your physical eyes. And also it's supposed to take into account the fact that we do believe that you also have a soul, which is something immaterial that interacts with the ether and the other worlds and the afterlife and um, that part of us that may exist after we pass on. So, um, we take into the whole the account of the whole self and when it comes down to the body we're not just trying to support a specific symptom we're trying to just give our body something that can help balance and maintain the whole even if it might have a specific action it also has other constituents that naturally exist in the plant that haven't been removed by a chemical process and the spirit and soul of that of that plant, that herb, um, still remains vibrationally the aura of the plant that you harvested and the positive benefits of coming in contact with that spiritual energy still remains in the holistic herbal or natural product to help bring your body and your spirit, your soul and your heart and your mind all into balance when you're using these products. So when we're de talking about an herb, all of my products are herbal, natural, naturopathic, holistic. Um, I do try to make sure that my products are responsibly sourced, um, organic whenever possible. Um, the only chemicals that are used in it are from a natural source, and the only reason I would call them a chemical is because they have been processed in a like a naturopathic lab to get a principle out of them as like a base for what the herbal product is going to sit and rest inside of. It brings it all together synergistically so that all of the ingredients inside of the product work together um, in a more powerful way. So um, when I'm talking about my products, we're talking about herbal products. And the reason that you would want to switch to natural products as opposed to products you may be using in your life is because they're a lot healthier for you. They don't have chemicals in them that can have harsh effects over a long term and build up like toxins and poisons in our body. Um, they have, they are retain their um, their auric principles or their spirit or their soul. So if that's something you believe in and um, wanting to not be divorced from the, um, the natural world and become a little bit more in touch with Mother Nature and the wilderness that we used to live in and um, be a natural part of for, for generations upon generations. Um, when you're dealing with natural products, the they also have not been industrialized, which means that they haven't been run through machines and, and diced and sliced and concentrated and evaporated. They haven't been um, processed so much that they've lost the heart and the soul of where they came from. They've also been treated in a respectful, ritualistic, or sacred manner, um, a responsible manner, so they haven't been wild harvested in a way that damages and depletes the ecosystem or the specific herb. We're not um, trashing the woods or we're not destroying the desert ecosystem by harvesting um, these ingredients that go into making these products so that they are thanked for what they've given us um, as they're being harvested. I, I buy all of my ingredients from companies, um, distributors that care very deeply about how their products are harvested, that the people that are working the farms if they are a farmed product as opposed to wild harvested that the people that are working there are treated well um, and they have responsible um, practices to not use pesticides on um, on the plants um, they use natural um, pest controlling um, 
practices and if they do wild harvest they don't deplete uh, the ecosystem around where they live and when they ship and when they um, process the herbs uh, for packaging um, to get them out to people like me the herbalists that make these products that there's not um, adulteration going on which means that you can have um, people that don't have very clean processing plants that accidentally get dust or dirt or debris or bugs or chemicals or other herbs even just contaminants mixing in with those products so even though I'm a small uh, small hometown pharmacist and I don't have all of those um, sources listed yet because I'm not big enough to have been able to take the time to list where all my sources come from. They are all responsibly sourced. Um, they don't have an impact on any endangered species or any endangered um, plant uh, ecosystems, just so that you guys know. So um, what else did I want to talk about today? So, <laughs> um, Lots of stuff. So basically... I really, really, really highly recommend using natural products. They've been such a benefit in my own life that I just, I just want to share the benefit and share the positivity um, out there in the world. So I hope that you will consider buying some of these products that I'm going to talk about today. Um, they are priced how they're priced because they come from responsible sourcing and they're not mass produced. They're not mass manufactured from big corporations and it, it costs a lot. It takes a lot um, of time and energy and development as an individual uh, to just get to the point where we are able to put a little label with my logo and my website on it and to get the right bag and the right right container that something um, will be able to be applied properly for you guys or something that's easy to use when I ship it out to you guys. So all of those aspects of it, um, we try to keep the cost down as much as possible because I don't want to break the bank. I want you guys to be able to actually use these things once you get them and to be able to maintain purchasing them and for them to be a part of your life. So I do try to keep the price down as much as possible. Um, but I just hope you guys understand that the fancier the packaging is, the more it costs me to put it in that packaging and the, the better the, the container works for your actual use that you're using it for, um, sometimes that makes the price go up a little bit. So they're priced as low as I possibly can get them right now because I want you guys to be able to purchase them. But um, the fancier labels that I have so that people that are kind of brainwashed by normal society that want to have that pretty picture to pick up off the box that explains lots of stuff you don't need to know or has a pretty picture that you don't necessarily need to look at. The important thing, well, that that's why the prices are what, they're, what they are, is because they're good, clean, high quality product inside of it and because the packaging just ends up costing. Um, so I hope you guys are okay with the price point on my products. You're welcome to message me on any questions, concerns, comments at any time, and I can um, answer any of them for you. But the important thing when you're looking for a natural product is not what the claims are on the box so much, other than you're, you want to make sure that they're naturally um, sourced from a good source and that they're not adulterated and that they are what they're claiming to be and that they do what they claim that they do. Um, every person is a little bit different. So, um, so the way that you're going to interact with that product compared to your, your mom or your brother or your friend is everybody's individual and everybody is going to have a different experience with each and every natural product. So we can say that in general, this product um, will be beneficial for this type of person. But if you have a different constitution, different genetics, different allergies, you always want to be careful when using a product for the first time because there's always a chance with anything, whether you buy it from the store or you buy it from a, na a natural practitioner, that you might have an allergy or an adverse reaction to it that um, somebody else didn't have. So as long as the product is preserved well and isn't um, growing any pathogens, any funguses, any bacteria, any viruses inside of it because it has a good um, 
um, good natural preservative base and it hasn't been on the shelf too long and it has good handling techniques. Um, you can be assured that somebody that's a responsible practitioner is not going to want to hurt you with their product. They care about you genuinely as opposed to some of these corporations out there. And um, that, yeah, they want to make sure that you get the right product for you and that you're using it in the right way so you don't hurt yourself with it. So um, mostly the important thing is not so much the packaging. The important thing is that when you buy a product that um, that what's inside of it actually works for you that it's healthy, that it's that it's clean, and that it doesn't have chemicals and preservatives that are from a from an industrialized source. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit here as well. Um, but just that you're buying from a good place and you're not being hoodwinked or led or guided just by the crowd or just by even by their advertising, because a lot of people are out there and they're just they're just wording things in a way that can get you on a bandwagon. So you spend your money on this product. And even though it's pitched as this grandiose thing, it's not necessarily what they claim that it is. I just, I hope you guys can understand that when I've, when I'm showing a product on my page, it's a hundred percent, 150 percent um, authentic and accurate what's inside of it. And that I wouldn't have made it if I didn't have a need for it myself in the first place, or I didn't have a friend or a family member or a client that needed it in the first place. And it needs to work. It needs to actually work. And if it doesn't work, then write me and contact me about a custom blend because I will do the research and try to find you that unique blend that that you actually need for yourself if one of my just baseline products is not really doing the trick and cutting it for you. So um, let's start by talking before I get into the specifics of the different groups of products that I have. Let's talk about um, what you want to watch out for when you're buying a product, especially from a store. You can go to your local GNC, you can go to your local grocery store, and they might claim that they have holistic and natural products. It might have a natural package on it. It might even be from a company that one of your friends told you about, but how do you know that it's actually a natural product and it's really well sourced? Well, first of all, you need to feel in your heart that you're actually working with with a company and with an herbalist or with a nature path that actually gives a crap about you and that actually genuinely is passionate about what they do, whether it is a large company that started out small and now they've made it to the point of being able to have fancy packaging and be in your local grocery store, or whether there's someone that's just a little hole in the wall herbalist that can only put a handwritten label on their product. What really truly matters is that they're not a liar and that they actually generally have a product that works and won't hurt you. So one of the things that you want to do is first just trust your heart and trust your intuition intuition and make sure that if you are asking questions about the product that somebody doesn't try to dissuade you from asking questions about it or talk over the top of your questions that without giving away there may be specific ingredient blends and things like that because um, that's their bread and butter to actually tell you how to make the product at home. That kind of defeats the purpose of all the years of knowledge on all the years of product testing that they've done to be able to achieve this really awesome product that they have. But in order to provide you like a basic ingredient list so that you know if you have allergies or at least ask or be able to ask you what your allergies are to be able to tell you yes or no, it doesn't have that in it. They should at least be able to do that for you. They should know where they're sourcing their product from. They should know that it's responsible, organic, be able to tell you, answer all those questions for you without getting mad or weird about it. The other thing, um, that they should be able to do is not just divert your attention away from that and start talking about like, oh, it's just amazing. Like, it's kind of like watching a magician show. Like you're asking a question and they don't really answer your question over here. Make sure that they're really honestly and solidly answering your question and not diverting your attention to something else. So there's one of my little tangents, but just 
just trust your heart and your intuition. Make sure you've actually got something, someone authentic that, um, that you're actually talking to about products. So the next thing that I really hope that you guys will start to do is taking a little bit of responsibility for yourselves and for your own health and your well-being. It's not easy to switch immediately over to 100% natural and organic products. Some of them are more difficult to use than something that's easy like a chemical cleaner that will have a long-term detrimental effect to your health. Some of them are easier because they've been around for so long in the store and you can just go out when you're shopping anyway ways and grab them. I don't know why you define them as easy to yourself, but it's starting to take stock of what you define as easy, what you define as difficult, and redefining that and just start making little changes in your life and starting to grab for natural products instead of those chemical um, and nasty like pre-made stuff from all the different industrial corporations. So um one of the things that you want to do when you're being responsible is take a little more time to read your product label. So I have a product here that I do use periodically because I have not been able to replace it with a natural product yet. I am in the process of trying to replace every single product that that I can that has ingredients in it. Um, that I don't really resonate with that I think can be harmful to my body and my family. Um, I do slowly try to make new products or acquire new products as I can. Um, this product is basically like for people with curly hair and um, it's to help your curls take. And the reason that I grabbed it out of some of the actual store-bought products is because when you're reading the back of the label, I want you guys to start taking some responsibility for the labels. You need to read each and every label, not just with the food that you eat, which is extremely important, um, but with the products that you use on the outside of your body, your cleaning products and everything like that. Because if you can't understand what's on the back of this label, you shouldn't be putting it on your body or taking it into your environment, period. Um, on the back of this, we have things like polyacrylate, polyquaternium 7, polysorbate 20, um, amino methyl propanol and tetrasodium EDTA, phenoxyethanol. Those are all chemical names. They will also have things on here that are the Latin term. Here's one, organic magifera indica or magifera indica, which literally just is mango seed. But they want to put the technical name on here so that they can basically confuse you and make it sound fancier than what it actually is. This It has mango seed oil in it right? But instead of saying that, they're going to put like Latin words on here or scientific terminology so that you can't just figure out that you might be able to hydrate your hair with mango seed oil as opposed to buying a chemical um, product that has all these other like really poisonous things inside of it and preservatives and things like that that can throw off your hormones and everything else. So this one is not, even though it has those kind of things in it, it's not that bad of a store-bought product. Um, this one, on the other hand, which I still have to use because in the industry there's absolutely no... Um, um, antibiotic or, or, or sorry, antibacterial ointments um, that you can buy on the market that do not start out like neosporin with um, petrolatum in them or petroleum. So petroleum is oil. It's one of the byproducts of the petroleum industry. It's the same thing that goes in your car, gasoline, okay? Propane that you burn for, for keeping your house warm and everything like that. Petrolatum is in everything. It's in Vaseline. It's in Icy Hot. It's in Vicks Vapor Rub for your chest. Petroleum causes cancer. If you find anything with petrolatum in it, then you want to chuck it, if at all possible, and replace it with a natural product. Now you can't get baxitracin, neomycin, and um, and um, sorry, dexamethasone and things like that that are not in a mineral oil, mineral oil, which is mineral 
BS because it actually comes from petroleum. Um, you can't find anything that actually has a topical antibiotic. Um, sometimes even your eye drops and your ear drops that you get for your ears have petroleum or they have antifreeze, which is your pro, uh, propylene glycol. So um, polypropylene glycol, there's different derivatives of it, the chemis chemistry, uh, chemistry names for them. Um, but you cannot get a product on the market that does not come in a petroleum base that instead comes in like an aloe vera base or an agar agar base or um, some other type of natural uh, seaweed type gelatin, you can't get that on the market. So right now I have to just kind of cringe by the fact that I'm putting petroleum on my skin each time I use something that might have to clean up a wound that a holistic product for whatever reason hasn't been able to help with. But whenever possible, I don't reach for this stuff anymore because it's kind of like Russian roulette. If you have the genetics that can end up um, having some type of cancer and you're putting petroleum on your skin or inside your body, um, you could end up giving yourself cancer. You're playing Russian roulette and increasing the odds, increasing the percentage that you could end up with cancer from using some of these products. Same with a lot of the chemicals and preservatives are carcinogens. A lot of your um, PEG and emulsifying waxes that are in a lot of your shampoos and conditioners, um, they're cancer causing, they're known carcinogens and not just like low level carcinogens, like literally, like if you use this for several months and you are predisposed to getting this cancer, you're increasing 1% each time you use this product. Or if it happens to be something that you had on your hand and then you ingested it, you could end up with colon cancer or things like that. So, um, um, just that aspect of things is starting to take a really big um, internal look at why you're reaching for the products that you are and what you're actually reaching for. And yeah, it's not easy to read every single label. Yeah, it's maybe not easy to read every ingredient in every label or understand what it is when you do a Google search on it. But that's part of why you can reach out to your local naturopath or your local herbalist or you can reach out to me to find out if it's a product that you should or should not be using because I went to college I understand how to read Latin I know what a lot of these chemical words mean a lot of these chemical names mean so along with my 11 years experience in herbology and understanding that side of healing. I also have a vet tech degree and I was practicing as a vet tech for years, which is not the human medicine field, but a lot of it correlates and transfers over to human medicine and at least the understanding of it. And um, because of just caring about this stuff myself, I understand what a lot of it is and what you shouldn't put on you. Like um, parabens. Parabens is something to really watch out for inside of your products. Parabens um, are literally put into skin moisturizers and things that says that they're going to be like a wrinkle cream or they're going to make your skin smoother. Um, they might do that to your skin, but they may give you skin cancer as well because parabens pull all those chemicals. They um, mess up the porosity of your skin and they can pull actually pull cancer causing and disease causing and poisoning type agents in through the layers of your skin that they wouldn't normally be able to penetrate um, until they get into the vascular system, the little vinyls and um, capillaries that are inside of your skin. And then it once it crosses into the blood barrier, it can go anywhere in your body. So obviously um, by using um, chemical products, non-natural products, especially if you have a problem with allergies. Um, we, we get a lot of autoimmune diseases from using these products and not even knowing that we're coming in contact with these things. They're, they might even say something like baby safe or hypoallergenic on them, but when you really start reading the labels and, and looking into the chemicals and the the preservatives and the other um, toxins that are in them, the petroleum and things like that, um, you'll really start to learn that even though 
these are generally regarded as safe as far as the FDA is concerned, or they're generally regarded as safe as far as the beauty industry is concerned. They're just getting away with that because they've they've gotten in by the skin of their teeth um, by getting it authorized to be used in that industry because of corruption in the people that authorize the use of these things in the Western the Western um, product field. So um, some of them are very, very unsafe. They can cause a lot of disease. They can put your body out of balance to the point where diseases can take hold that wouldn't normally be able to take hold. They can cause you to have massive allergies. And it's not just like a stuffy, stuffy nose or sneezing um, or or like a red, red itchy sensation. It just means your body is having a histemic reaction and is constantly li living in a state um, of inflammation and um, an autoimmune reaction because it's trying to protect itself from all of these chemicals and toxins that it's coming in contact with. So if you get hit with a disease because you're using these products that have all these unnatural ingredients in them, your body is less able to fight off disease and to just remain in a balanced and healthy state because you've been constantly applying and spraying and wiping and and ingesting all this stuff that you really shouldn't be coming in contact with. So my hope and my goal um, in these videos is to educate you guys a little bit at a time um, to, to get you on a bad, better path to being healthy, to make it easier for you so you maybe don't have to do these hours and days and weeks of research into um, products. If you trust me, if you like the type of stuff that you see on my page, then I've already done it for you. I've already changed this in my own life and it should be easy to just grab that product and use it in yours. So, um, so that's why to use holistic um, products is because they will bring your body back down into a more natural, more balanced um, state of wellness so that if you do happen to get hit with a virus, a bacteria, a fungus, a toxin, or some negative spiritual thing or energetic um, bombardment, um, even stress and emotional chaos, or if you're having a lot of mental problems at work, that you're better able to holistic or to better able to just balance um, yourself naturally and internally, your body will be able to naturally heal itself um, easier and the herbal products will be easier able to heal you because you're not bombarding yourself with things that are toxic to your body. So I'm going to put these artificial things away that I would love to replace and if I'm ever able to make a product that can replace them, you can be sure that it will be on my website. Um, and we're going to move on to um, talking a little bit about how I class my products before we get into the products themselves. And I might stop this video and do two separate videos if it if anything gets glitchy on my computer. But if it doesn't, then we'll just keep streaming on one video. So um, when you receive a product from me, you might have... Um, it labeled tonic or crisis. And so that you guys understand um, the difference between those, I will grab one here. So teas are a really good example. You can see up at the top here that it says tonic on the top corner. And this one says crisis. Okay, so what those terms mean, a tonic herb is actually a grass herb, or it's something that's generally regarded as safe. It's something that many, many societies have eaten as food for many years without any adverse effects, as long as you don't have a really, like a really critical health condition or allergy to a specific herb in that blend, and you're unique in your own individual way. It, they're generally regarded as the mass amount of society are not going to be hurt by these herbs by using them in a traditional way. At least the holistic fields, um, the herbalist field classifies them as that. So a tonic herb is something that you can take all the time, as much or as little as you want. 
obviously everything in moderation. You don't want to have excess of, of anything in your life. But as long as you stay within the recommended um, suggested traditional dose for the blends and how our ancestors used to take them, then a tonic herb should be something fairly safe to take as often as it feels right for your body to take it. Um, a crisis herb, on the other hand, is something that we would consider a medicinal herb. A crisis herb can also be a fairly safe herb, um, but it is something that somebody with a specific known chronic or acute health problem might want to be cautious about taking for one reason or another because say you might be on um, blood pressure medication and you take something that increases blood pressure or has the ability to heighten blood pressure or increase the flow of your blood. It could be hard on your heart. So you always want to talk to your herbalist about any health conditions or about any medications that you're currently taking because most herbs don't interact act with drugs, but some can, like St. John's wort is one that can interact with um, antidepressant medications. Um, uh, aspirin, if you take aspirin, aspirin on a regular basis and you are taking something with willow bark or skullcap um, or um, Queen of the Meadow or Meadowsweet, those all have aspirin type components inside of them and they can enhance the effect of the blood thinning properties of aspirin. So you would, it would just be like being responsible with an aspirin. You're not going to down an entire bottle of aspirin. Most intelligent people know that that could cause a, that could kill you. That could cause a massive health, health problem or it could kill you. Same with using it for the elderly or using it for a child child, you're going to use like half the dose because they're more sensitive than a healthy adult or they're smaller than your average sized adult. So um, anything that's a crisis herb, you really don't want to just buy and start taking um, on your own or a medicinal herb that has a chance of interacting with a um, with some type of medication and I hate I hate this concept that's out in the field that's like oh it interacts with the medication so the herb should be being stopped taken being taken why does the medicine have such a bad side effect that it would push your body so out of balance that something you eat or drink or take could, could hurt you that would never hurt you before you took that medicine. So that's going to be a whole nother video about um, when we should, when, you know, when I choose to, um, to say no to doctors and to push back a little bit and support my beliefs in um, using holistic medicine um, prior to um, putting Western medicine above, but I can't, all, I can't advise you guys to do that, but I will do an entire video about um, Western versus um, versus holistic medicine. So a crisis herb is something. If you see that on my website, or if it's some, if it's a crisis herb, absolutely don't just start taking it. And other than how it is suggested traditionally by the insert that you get with the herb. And if you have a known health problem or you have, um, have any medications that you're on, please communicate with me prior to ever starting this. And as with any of my products, always talk to your doctor or your therapist or your other, um, uh, your other licensed, um, um, doctor uh, prior to taking any holistic medicine. So, um, so if you see a crisis herb, you want to be a little more cautious with it because there is a chance that if it was taken long term, not all of them, but some of them have little things to watch out for. Like they could be like an aspirin or like a Motrin that you would take over the counter. Um, that they that if you take too much of it or you take it over too long of a period of time without giving your body a break, that they can build up in your filtration organs like your liver or your kidney. And just like taking too much over over-the-counter medication or using it irresponsibly that you could toxify your liver or your kidney. Now, if you take it in the recommended doses and you don't have a liver or kidney um, problem, you don't have a diseased liver or kidney, then 
the likelihood that that's going to cause any problems is not high. But um, you always want to be cautious with something that says crisis on it. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about is anything that says that is absolutely an external product, do not use it internally because it most likely has um, natural preservatives in it and other things that I add to it that are not meant to be ingested. So if it says external, please respect that fact um, and if it doesn't say external only then it's completely up to you how you use it I will send an insert about how it was traditionally used in the past by people but it's totally up to you if you choose to ingest it or use it just for auric healing so um, yeah so I think what I want to start out with next is talking about some different categories of products. Since I don't have a food license, um, because a lot of these types of products can't be licensed for ingestion because of how our society is right now, and I don't necessarily think that there should be a lot of regulations over things that are basically grass herbs that are generally regarded as safe, just like you don't have regulation over what you can eat at the grocery store and you got to kind of learn it and figure it out for yourself and be responsible with it, just like with eggplant. Because if you don't cook eggplant or you don't cook potato or you don't cook chicken, then you are basically putting yourself in danger of poisoning yourself or you're basically putting yourself in danger of getting salmonella, okay? So learn your products educate yourself. Don't just do what's easy. Don't just do what's lazy. If you're gonna go on a natural path, you're going on the wise path. path. You're going on the higher path and the higher vibrational path because you care about yourself and you care about your family and you want to educate yourself and not necessarily do what's easy, but do what's better. So some of the things that I offer, I offer, I started putting things together on in a pile on my table here, and maybe I can see if I can swing the camera down, down to some of this product. I cannot even believe how much established product that I have that's now in a pile <laughs> on the table. So um, this is going to be a pretty long video if I'm talking about all of it, but hopefully you guys can um, can fast forward or rewind and jump to different places um, to re-reference stuff that I talk about. So I think what I want to start out with is some products that, um, that I came up with, a line of products that... Um, I was dealing with major imbalances in my own health and just wanting to have products that were general good health products, just general things, herbal remedies that I could take personally and use constantly um, just to maintain good health. It's not because I'm sick or because I have some kind of specific complaint, but because I just wanted to support my overall healing and my overall good health and something that I wanted to have kind of like maintenance product. So um, what I started out by making, well, the first product that I other than aromatherapy products, which I'm going to get into here. Um, so what I think I'm going to start out with on my table here is my herbal remedy powders that you can find on my website. And one of the first powders that I made, I made because I was basically dying from a candida infection that my doctor would not acknowledge could overgrow and move into my spinal column and move into my digestive tract, my mouth as thrush, and into my bloodstream where it, it was finally trying to kill me. So I felt like a 90 year old woman and I was almost dying and I can't like legally say that this cured me but it it was part of the process that that really helped me stay alive until the nice statin that I finally was able to get prescribed by my doctor after about three years of fighting the western medicine process of just being um, jumping through hoops and being kept from the specialists I needed to see to be able to get the medicine Nystatin, which is actually an extract from a specific type of bacteria that lives in the ground. So Nystatin is pretty much a holistic uh, product, um, even though it's only available by prescription. 
I took nystatin to help get rid of my candida and drink a lot of coconut milk. And then I also created a product um, of a blend of herbs that is um, supportive and soothing to an inflamed digestive tract. So that product is called Tummy Tonic. And it's a very supportive um, product that you mix in milk. And this is one that actually comes with a recipe. So you want to also order the recipe with it. But if you're having digestive complaints that are not a flu and are not like a bleeding ulcer type problem, um, then this is the first thing to reach for. It helps with, um, with gas. You can take it with um, a dried apple. You take a dried apple and you wait 10 minutes and then you, if you choose to take this, then you would mix it into milk in my recipe and, um, and wait another 10 minutes. And if you don't see a positive result from it, then I would recommend going to the doctor. So um, tummy tonics available on my website and it's definitely like a digestive, um, energetic, supportive herb blend. So um, the next one that I made is um, something that I was looking at a lot of the vitamins and minerals that are out there um, in the industry and they have all sorts of things like talc powder in with them and um, zinc to make them look white and just to make them look pretty for for you to eat and all sorts of preservatives and also a lot of your vitamins and minerals that are are just a waste of a waste of money because they're sourced from a mineral source which means it's ground up rock or ground up earth that they're making into a vitamin and a mineral capsule and your body you, we would be out there just eating dirt, just shoveling rocks into our body if we could actually get minerals from that. Now, certain things like salt, you can eat the direct mineral and it will interact with your chemistry inside of your digestive tract and you can pull those beneficial minerals into your body. But a lot of minerals we're not able to get from non-organic sources because we're not an earthworm so or we're not a plant. So what we need is an intermediary to take in those minerals and digest it themselves like an herb or like an animal and then that mineral gets attached to a chain of molecules and becomes an organic mineral. And that organic mineral has little molecules attached to the outside of it, like little little fingers, little um, reactive um, branches coming off of it that your digestive tract can then actually grab onto and pull into your body rather than all of it just flushing out of your system when you use the restroom later in the day. So if you actually want a vitamin or a mineral that works, um, you need to up the amount of organic sources inside of it. So I'll talk about um, other um, companies that I use in another line um, to help supplement this, um, but the majority of the vitamins and minerals that you need to get, you get from your diet anyways, as long as you have a balanced nutritional diet. Um, I do offer sessions to help talk to people about um, how to how to potentially balance your nutrition in a holistic way if you don't know how to do that already. Um, and and a lot of I have, offer a lot of different sessions to go into more depth about this. If you're not educated in it, I'd ha be happy to take you on as a session customer. Um, but one of the products you can start out with to bring more organic sourced vitamins and minerals into your body is called Wild Greens Powder. And um, it comes with a recipe. I have several recipes um, to make this taste really yummy. And you take this um, once a day for seven days and then um, just once a week thereafter, um, unless you're dealing with some kind of health complaint where your body is like wasting or in a weakened state where you might need additional nutrients to keep it up. Um, at the level that it needs to be at. So this is called Wild Greens Powder. It's a natural vitamin and mineral supplement on my website. And I've only touched the surface on these products. So um, the next two products that I have can be bought separately or together. And one is called um, Kelpie, my computer is not focusing on it, but it's called Kelpie Care um, a seaweed shake. And then this one is called um, mushroom powder. So mushrooms are not only nutrients that 
we don't get in contact with um, very often in a lot of our diets and seaweed as well. Um, but they're mushrooms are also extremely beneficial for fighting cancer, for for boosting your body's natural ability to push back against cancer. And they have um, just um, a lot of different properties to them that help with fighting cancers and other growths. Um, Chinese medicine. So the type of herbalism that I practice is eclectic. I um, follow uh, Western folk traditions, Appalachian traditions, Ayurveda, um, Chinese herbalism, and just um, Native American and just anything that I can pull together and combine um, in this maelstrom um, to to create really, really kind of like high level products that combine something from maybe the Chinese herbalism field to something that mixes Ayurveda. And then I blend them together into a product so you get the benefits of both worlds. So um, basically the products that I make are my own and you're not gonna find them anywhere else. This mushroom powder has a blend of at least eight mushrooms in it that are non-poisonous mushrooms that each have a different principle for different types of healing. It's just something that I add to my diet um, constantly. So again, I can't tell you to take it internally, but um, um, mushroom powder is great. So is the Kelpie Care, the Kelpie Care um, seaweed and the natural iodines in seaweed. You want to use this in moderation, not like overkill with it, even though it says it's a tonic because too much iodine can be too much for you. But anyone that eats Japanese like sushi cuisine and stuff, you're going to come in contact with a lot of seaweed anyways. There's several different forms of seaweed um, blended into Kelpie Care, uh, along with a few other herbs that um, help it work in a synergistic fashion. But um, iodine helps balance um, your thyroid and your hypothyroid, so um, helps support those um, for a healthy um, hormone balance inside of your body. So those are two just like all the time tonic herbal remedy blends that I have that I take at least weekly just to help keep my health up. Um, I made this next herbal remedy powder um, for, uh, for a client that was suffering from a lot of um, autoimmune disease which caused um, excuse me, um, that caused a lot of problems with like swelling in their joints and um, just inflammation all over the body. So any kind of inflammation complaint, this next, um, this next herbal blend is for, it just lowers inflammation in the body is what the herbs are traditionally used for. And it is called golden milk. And it um, comes with a recipe. So golden milk, um, one of the main ingredients in it is turmeric and ginger, although it has multiple herbs blended into it, but um, it's been used um, in Tibet and other Asian countries for a lot of years um, without it being in a sweet form. So my recipe is kind of a sweet recipe for it, um, but you can also use it just plain um, in milk or in a milk replacement um, for um, for if you're suffering from arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis comes from an inflammatory process um, as opposed to osteoarthritis, which usually has to do with bone buildup or lack of fluid density and or lack of fluid um, lubrication inside of your joints for mobility. And so you start getting like bone rubbing against bone. Um, the other kind of arthritis, which has to do with like inflamed joints, this might be a beneficial herb blend for you um, if you think that it um, if it calls to you to help with something like that. So um, one of my other remedies is something that I have on hand that is that is more of a crisis or a emergency herb. It's not a tonic herb. Um, this is something that you just want to have on hand in, in emergencies, which will lead into some of my other emergency products. So what I have here is something that you probably don't want to use without a recommendation of an herbalist like me of how to take it for your specific complaint. Um, and obviously see a doctor um, prior to taking this. This does not, you do not want to necessarily use 
confuse this with something that's prescribed by a doctor. Um, but you can try it in if you're on the holistic path. It is herbs that are blended and have antibiotic properties. So it's definitely something that you don't want to abuse um, and you probably want to contact me privately about um, ways to use it and um, situations that it can be used in best and how I recommend um, dosing it I guess um, um, in different situations but it's called herbal antibiotic powder and um, some of the bugs that are out there in the world, some of the viruses and bacteria that are out there in the world um, nowadays, they are becoming really, really resistant to um, Western medicine antibiotics. So if you want to protect your family and you want to have something on hand for emergencies in case you come across a disease that... Um, that Western medicine can't cure. Um, I'm not saying that this can do it, but I'm saying that I have used this when I have had, my family has had really, really bad infections, really, really bad um, superbugs that nobody else has been able to prescribe a medication for, and, and this has helped. So it's called herbal antibiotic powder, and please, please, please don't use it without contacting me or another herbalist that knows what to do with it. Um, Leading into my other um, emergency products, things that are great to have in like an, um, a natural first aid kit is um, something that is absolutely, absolutely external. Do not ingest this. It's called herbal quick clot powder. And unfortunately, I have had cause to use this. Um, I stabbed myself with a screwdriver while helping my husband work on a flute in our music store and I was bleeding all over the place and um, didn't have any um, anything Western medicine um, nearby, but I had recently made up this quick clot powder, so unfortunately I think I might have manifested it into my life, but um, I was bleeding in my kitchen and um, wasn't going to be able to drive myself to the doctor, and I reached for this, and um, obviously you want to clean the wound afterwards with um, Chlorhex or Betadine and immediately get to the ER to get stitches um, or whatever else you need to have done um, by the hospital there, um, but this can this can stop bleeding in an instant it has on me so um, I literally just reached pinched it on directly onto the wound until that bleeding stopped and it was immediately clotted the blood on my hand it will not cause an infection or it didn't in me um, they have the herbs in this have antibacterial and antiviral and um, antifungal properties to them. So as long as the scab comes out and you don't have that grit embedded in the wound once it fully closes, then um, this won't cause a problem with the healing. Once it's clotted and it can be rinsed, or once you've gotten past the, the threat of bleeding to death <laughs> um, or bleeding excessively from a wound um, and you're rushing to the ER and you're putting this on on the way to the ER, um, you can flush this out, the doctor can flush this out um, with, um, with surgical uh, solution and stitch up the wound and it won't cause a problem for the doctor. So um, it's just a really amazing thing to have on hand um, for emergencies. The other thing that I use constantly at home is my herbal butter balm here. And um, the herbs in this, actually, I use them to replace Neosporin and other um, um, triple antibiotic ointments. It, um, it, it has been extremely effective against any kind of topical wound infection for small cuts and abrasions. And it also just works as a really, really lovely, like, chapped lip um, balm. So instead of using chapstick with all the petrolatum in it, you can buy herbal butter balm just for your lips, um, and it doubles as an antibiotic um, salve. So um, it's antifungal, and a viral, or at least the herbs that I've brewed inside of it, have had scientific research that supports that. Um, works for cuts, scrapes, and um, and other small wounds like that. So um, it is in a base of beeswax and honey, and um, it's just lovely stuff. It's really nice. So um, 
If you're gonna make a first aid kit, I absolutely recommend Herbal Butter Balm and the Herbal Antibiotic Powder and Herbal Quick Clot to be in that emergency kit. Um, the other products for emergency that I keep on hand at home, um, this one is actually a fairly new product that I am extremely happy with. I don't have a fancy name for it yet, but it is available on my website. It's called um, Herbal Antiseptic Spray. And um, it, I believe that I was going to call it the Flora Spray because there's a lot of flowers in it and I wanted to honor Flora with that. But um, what this is is just what it says. It can actually replace like Bactine and things like that on cuts and scrapes when your kids like go out and they get road rash from playing um, outside and getting hurt and things like that, getting little scrapes and cuts. But it also works phenomenally well as um, an astringent to clean out um, greasy and clogged pores. So um, you can put it on a little cotton, um, like a cotton swab that you can get from Walmart or your grocery store or whatever um, local like store that you have that has like a beauty department. You can get Q-tips, you can get a cotton swab, you can use linen if you use like natural co um, cotton from a holistic distributor and you just spray about like eight to ten sprays onto that cotton swab and you can do your whole face with it or if you get pimples like acne on your back, things like that, it'll pull the dirt and the oil right out and clear up acne. So I love this stuff um, for in a pinch for little spritzes on scrapes and cuts um, and also for really really well for for ac an acne remedy so that I would have in my emergency cabinet the other thing that I have is um, that um, herbal antibiotic powder also comes in a syrup or a tincture bottle form um, which is called rejuvenation potion so you can use um, two to four uh, dropperfuls of that um, if you want to use it in place of the powder and the powder recipe. So um, the, the other one that I have is an external herbal antibiotic tincture. And so please make sure that you know that you're, you're keeping the two um, separate, that you're keeping the externals and the internals away from each other so that you don't um, accidentally uh, yeah, accidentally mix the two up. So, um, I mean, I, I, I highly doubt that anyone's going to poison themselves with my products. They're, they're fairly safe, but it still might give you a tummy ache if you accidentally mix them up. So the rejuvenation potion, it'll last longer if you keep it in the fridge. Any of the potions or syrups will last longer if you keep them in the fridge. All of my other products, um, you just want to make sure that they stay in a temperature neutral situation because they all have natural preservatives in them, which um, which help fight pathogens that might come in contact with your products, but they're not going to keep everything at bay from growing in them. Um, my products have a slightly shorter shelf life um, for things like like the lotions and things like that. And I'll talk about that when I get there, but most of them have a very, very long shelf life. Anything that is in an alcohol or glycerin base or even the syrups, I mean, they can last for like a year plus. Um, I can't guarantee them for that long, but if you're really, really careful to not contaminate them by like touching the surface with your finger or breathing over the top of them, um, they can last a really, really long time. Keep them in a temperature like a room temperature or cooler situation. You don't want to freeze them and you don't want to get them hotter than room temperature else the chance that they can grow pathogens um, or get oxygenated or spoil becomes really high. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is um, my herbal antibiotic tincture. So this is an external tincture that is just in a different form than the herbal butter balm. It's basically really, really similar herbs that are in them. This is just in an oil base so that you can dropper it onto harder to reach places than the herbal butter balm. So with wounds, you want to be careful because sometimes they can be irritated by one product and not irritated by the other. Um, if you want to learn better how to use these products and how to do herbalism in general, um, I do teach herbal classes. They're $150 right now. I do have um, discounts and trade programs for low-income customers. Um, 
in special situations. But um, in general, they're $150 to jump on board with the herbalist um, uh, lessons on my website. So you can check those out too. Um, what do I want to talk about next? So basically, I think that that is your, um, your general like things to keep on hand for emergencies. We'll talk about um, some other products that might um, work well with those when I move into the teas. Um, basically with herbalism, you're not just grabbing for one product. Usually you have a kit where it's a kit that's going to work. You're going to break off part of the kit and use it with these products for this problem, or you're going to break off part of the kit and use these products with these other products. And you're going to make a group of products that work synergistically to work on a larger concept problem. So even though with like the quick clot, you're going to be stopping the bleeding of the wound, you also may want to have something like a sore muscle rub tincture to help with the bruising when the bruising comes out three months later. Or you might want to have the herbal butter balm or external um, oil tincture to help to make sure it doesn't get infected as you go. And if the oil is too irritating because it's a wet wound and it's gotten stagnant and it needs to dry out for some reason because it's gotten too wet in the healing process, then you might switch to something like the herbal antiseptic. Um, so one product is not going to work 100% for every situation. It's really learning how to fine tune those products for your specific situation to make sure that they work to their to to the hundred percent capacity that they can, and using the the companion product that will bring it to the next level of healing. So um, another really cool product that I have external, and we can get into the sprays a little bit, um, is called Soothe Song. So this is a, an aroma mist or an aroma spray. Um, and it's it also comes in a lotion form, and I haven't gotten into those yet, but I do make aroma sprays, and these are just a little spritz, so the bottle opens up and you just spritz, spritz, spritz. So um, what Soothe Song is for is for little minor insect bites and little cuts and stings and things like that too, but what it works um, amazingly well for, um, like, just mind-bogglingly well for is for burns, like especially for sunburn and for little blisters from burns, that that really, really strong, intense pain that you have and the heat itself. Soothe Song can take that burn either, depending on the level and severity of the burn, obviously if you have a really bad burn, you want to be going to the burn ward and going to the hospital. But if you have like a low-level burn, and that pain and that sting, like you've singed yourself on the fire on the frying pan, and you get a little blister from it, or um, you've you've sat out in the sun too long, and you're looking like a lobster. Um, if you reach for the soothe song and you spritz that on yourself, and you you are a little mindful next time and you stay out of the sun and you keep yourself under the shade so that your body has a chance to heal, the soothe song will immediately take the sting out of that sunburn or out of that blister. It's amazing relief how fast this stuff works. So Soothe Song could also be part of an emergency cabinet. Um, I also make a version of Soothe Song, which is a manzanita poison oak remedy. So it has manzanita tea with the berries and the leaves um, brewed up into it uh, with the Soothe Song. And that's also um, to help take away the itch and help heal poison oak faster. So that's also on my website. Um, so moving from kind of the emergency aid products into something that might be a little bit, it's still an acute problem, it's still something that came on quickly, um, and you're, you're just trying to handle it like all at once and you're not exactly sure how to deal with it. If those emergency products don't seem to quite fit the bill, then I have a couple of other teas that work really great for that. So. First of all, I have, I'm 
going to be making a stamina potion, which isn't available yet, but it's going to be hormone balancing for men. And it's also going to be something that'll increase energy during certain phases for women to use too. It's something that girls aren't going to want to use all the time. You're going to want to use it in your luteal and um, so your wanting moon and dark moon phase. If you if you're some of my customers that are taking my moon sinking program, um, you're going to want to use it during just specific times of the month or it could potentially cause some hormonal imbalance in you ladies that have sensitivities to that. But I'm going to be making a stamina potion, which is also going to be an immune boosting po potion that you can... Um, that you can take basically all the time or at least two, uh, two weeks out of the month to help increase energy and help increase your body's ability to fight off um, pathogens. So I'm talking about colds and flu bugs and things like viruses and, and, and strep throat and things like that that you might come in contact with. If you want to support the healing, obviously you're going to go to your doctor, but if you want to support the healing naturally, support your body naturally, these are some holistic traditional ways that people used to do this in history. So one of them is an echinacea and roots tea. It's very important that you take a tea like this prior to getting sick. Otherwise, you're just exhausting your immune system because you're full bore into the infection after that point. If you come in contact with someone that's ill, you usually have an incubation period that's, if it's very, very a very virulent disease, it usually takes about a day to 48 hours. If it's not very virulent, it will take up to two weeks for you to become ill from something you come in contact with. So I have products that help keep you from getting sick and that help support support your energy while you're trying to fight off getting sick and that helps support your energy while you're sick. So um, let's start out with before you actually get sick. So one of those things that I'm holding is the Echinacea and Roots Tea and that is an immune boosting tea. So if you first come in contact with someone that was sneezing around you, coughing, or they just said that they felt ill, then I would immediately start taking the echin echinacea and roots tea as directed um, because it'll immediately boost your immune system. And you also will want to reach for, if I can find it sitting here, the antiviral inner sanctum syrup. Now, inner sanctum also helps with people that might have a communicable disease like um, like a herpes virus or like AIDS. It's, um, it's supposed to help keep your body's immune system supported and help keep that viral load down. So anytime that you are battling a virus, you want to um, be looking for inner sanctum and the echinacea and roots tea. Those are going to be your adaptogen herbs that I'll talk about in another um, video and your immune boosting herbs. So, those are for boosting your immune system. And also, what you want to take, and this is also a tonic that I recommend people take all the time. Um, it's an electrolyte balancer. So, anytime that you're ill, fighting a disease, or just regularly in your diet, you should have lemon and you should have electrolytes and you should have um, all the properties of what's inside of here. So, this is called Lemon Drop Electrolyte Cordial, and it basically is a natural electrolyte solution instead of something like Pedialyte, which has, again, like really crappy things inside of it that are nothing you should be eating because it can be toxic to your kids. This is a really good replacement for something like Pedialyte or, um, or Gatorade or Powerade or any of your other sports drinks that are, that are claiming to increase electrolytes in your body. Um, what an electrolyte does, what your salts and your lemons and things like that do, is they, um, they help your body uptake water. So when you are um, retaining water, some girls especially during certain times of the month, they um, retain water and they get um, really sore ankles. Like you can notice it in your feet and your ankles and they might swell or something like that. It's actually a sign of dehydration. And um, you can get that with, uh, with gout and with 
heart problems. Um, anytime your fluid balance is out of alignment in your body, you don't just need to drink a lot of water. Obviously, you need to drink more water and you need to extremely lower your sugars and completely cut alcohol out of your body. But um, but what you also need to do is um, is increase your electrolytes in your body. And those are natural salts, nat natural acids, and, and other principles that help your body bond to the water molecule and basically suck it into the cells or the tissue in your body. If that salt and electrolyte and fluid balance isn't balanced, then your body cannot uptake water and you will just pee it out and and you will stay dehydrated. Sometimes your digestive tract can't, um, is too com um, compromised um, when you're really, really ill and you actually need to go to the doctor and get fluids, either IV or subcutaneously, um, because you can't actually digest something that will help you bring the water in. So if you're severely dehydrated or severely having heart problems with your with your blood, because your blood is 80% is water, um, maybe even 90% water, I don't know the actual number, but um, um, if you are dehydrated, it is severely damaging to your organs and to your heart and just to your entire body in, in general. We're mostly water. So the first herb that you ever need to use is water. Just drink and eat healthily and then reach for herbal products. So um, lemon balm um, electrolyte a uh, cordial lemon drop is um is a natural electrolyte so that you don't have to reach for things that have chemicals and preservatives in them to try to balance your electrolytes in your body and then drink a lot of water. So when you're sick, it compromises not only the temperature balance in your body, but your ability to take to take in water. And sometimes, like if you have the runs or you're coughing and sneezing a lot, um, you, you can have a lot more fluid loss as well. If you're vomiting, you're losing a lot of fluids each time you're going through those things, your body's putting it out more than it can take it in. So you become very dehydrated. So it's really important to make sure that you take an electrolyte, not only just tonically um, through the week, um, for your joint health as well, um, especially like if you have our, any kind of arthritis um, or joint, joint problems, you want to support your joints um, by bringing in electrolytes. If you exercise a lot, you're sweating all that water out. So lemon drop electrolyte cordial is... Um, is one of the one of the main things along with wild greens powder that that I recommend that everybody have on hand for maintaining a nice balanced system. So then if um if the type of illness that you're dealing with is more vi viral, obviously we're going to reach for the inner sanctum. If you're dealing with something that's more bacterial and you know it's bacterial, then you might be able to deal to reach for the herbal antibiotic powder, or you might be able to reach for the herbal antibiotic um, rejuvenation potion, um, or if it's something that's an upper respiratory uh, cold, you're gonna be reaching for two other products. You're gonna be reaching, or three actually, you're gonna be reaching for Seasons of Discontent Tea, which is specifically designed to help open airways and help battle um, upper respiratory type um, um, bad bugs that are out there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little tired. Um, so um, it's called Seasons of Discontent. This is a tea that you would reach for when you're having aller like seasonal allergies or you might be having an upper respiratory cold. Um, that's going to balance your energy with that. Then um, this is called another product that I make that is absolutely an external product. Do not drink this. Do not take this internally. This is called Clear Chasms Herbal Smoke and Vapor Blend. If you are a smoker, this is a product that can help you stop smoking. You can roll it up and use it as a cigarette um, or in a pipe if that's how you smoke. Um, but the other way that this can be used is um, is for any type of upper respiratory infection. You would brew it up inside of a teacup and you don't drink it. You cup your hands over it or you put a wet cloth over it and then you just deeply inhale the vapor that's coming up from the hot water. It's called clear chasms 
And what it does is it's an expectorant and um, a demulcent. So it will um, open your airways up, it will soothe your airways, and it will help you cough out any of that deep, embedded, nasty phlegm. Works, um, they're herbs that have um, been claimed over the years to help with things like uh, COPD and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's that's what they're traditionally used for. Um, also, really, really good herbs for with allergies. And I also make these herbal vapor inhalers that I don't know if you can see it in the bag there. It opens up and you kind of just hold it up to one nostril and then the other nostril. And I'm able to put blends of essential oils in here. And um, this specific one is called deep breath. I also make a deep sleep. Let's see if we can focus on it. Deep breath. There we go. So um, what this does is it, again, it also, anytime you're having allergies or you're having a stuffy nose, um, it will open up the airways so that you can breathe again. It'll help you, help you, um, help you breathe better. And the deep sleep is for people that are suffering with insomnia. I also make one called Essence, which is for stress and anxiety. So they're a little bit of aromatherapy. I do make other custom, um, aroma inhalers and as well for specific um, com complaints that the aromatherapy side of what I do um, covers, but I'm not gonna get too in depth with that right this second. So um, the other thing that you can reach for is if you're having like a histamine reaction, like something that has set off the histamines of your body, something you would reach for a Benadryl or a Claritin for. You can also um, reach for fine fairy tea. So this is called fine fairy tea and it's herbs that are um, generally used as adaptogens and as um, soothing herbs that for like for skin scrapes and cuts it's something that you could use to pour over a wound um, to rinse the wound out if you don't like using um, or that's what it was traditionally used for um, back in like medieval times um, for before people had um, betadine solution and chlorhexidine and your other surgical s scrub and um, antibiotics uh, solutions that you can mix up in water. You would brew a tea or uh, pour a weak alcohol like brandy rum diluted in water over a wound. So these do have antibacterial and antiviral properties, adaptogenic properties, but it also works extremely well as a soothing tea as um, and antihistamine um, and just to fight low-grade infections. So um, I have used it personally when I had a nasal infection. I've actually sniffed some using a little dropper bottle up into my nose without getting it in my lungs. And um, as long as you don't overdo it and you just do it a couple times a day, um, I have I have used it to clear up a sinus infection. I've used it as an eye wash. Um, when I got a chemical sunscreen in my eye in the middle of the backwoods and had to walk three hours out and I couldn't see anything because I'd burned my retina and started to have an allergic reaction to all the pollen in the water of the creek I was um, swimming in. Um, I flushed my eyes with this because it was all I had on hand um, and I was able to get that that histamine reaction down in the middle of the night when the doctor's office wasn't open to the point where I didn't end up having to go to a doctor because I used this as an eye flush. You do not want to put any sugars or any additives in here. It needs to be just a plain tea that you strain the solids out of a lot so it's very clean and clear. So there's brewing instructions that come with these products products, the teas especially when you buy them, just suggested uses traditionally um, for them. So this again is called Fine Fairy Tea. It's a nice versatile tea uh, to use for lots of different purposes. So um, might also be a good thing for your emergency cabinet. My other tea that I have is called um, uh, Fifth Chakra Tea. And this tea pairs well with tummy tonic, except its recipe works really well for like a flu bug because where tummy tonic um, expects that it's going to be used in milk or some type of lipid substance as a, like as in coconut rice or um, almond milk, um, oatmeal milk, different milk replacers. Um, this you do not want to take with milk because if you have a flu bug and you take milk, you will immediately 
vomit. It is, it's something that does not sit well if you actually have the influenza virus. So, um, so fifth chakra tea is an alternative tea um, for dealing with stomach upset, and it also um, works well for morning sickness, or it has herbs that have been traditionally used for morning sickness. So I'm kind of bouncing around here. I'm trying not to get myself confused. I know we're about an hour and a half in, and I want to make sure that I go through everything here. I pulled something else aside for illness need to organize what I've actually talked about here so that I don't go over things two times in a row. We did that and that. Hope you guys are still hanging in here with me. I know it's a long video. I hope this is enough information for you guys too. Um, if I miss anything or if I didn't talk about something enough, just just type a message to me and I am happy to get on and talk to you. So. This um, this tincture is called an um, elderberry syrup, and it's also something that um, was taken uh, traditionally. It's really hard to get my cal my camera to focus on it, but it's called elderberry syrup, and it's also an immune boosting syrup. So um, works well with the other immune boosters that I was talking about. This is also something that you don't want to take when you're sick. You want to take it prior to being sick um, to help potentially support your body in its fight against things. Um, this is also something that works really well for respiratory, upper respiratory infections and sore throats. It's called red rum cough syrup and um, it it works phenomenally well um, when you have sore tonsils and your tonsils are fighting something just to help soothe them and make them feel better. At least in my experience, that's how it's felt when I've used it. So um, just take a couple drop of, dropperfuls and you don't want to swallow so much of this stuff. It can cause stomach upset if you have too much of it. Um, it's more to be used as a gargle. So you want to, it's okay if you swallow like a couple dropperfuls up to four dropperfuls of this in, in one use and you can use it up to four times a day. Um, I would half that for kids. But um, what you want to make sure that you do is swish it around in your mouth and gargle it so it gets on and coats that those tonsils and that back part of your throat before you swallow it down and then take a few deep breaths because the eucalyptus and the licorice and things that are in it <sighs> will help open those airways. So I would add that to the cabinet for any upper respiratory colds and sore throats. That's how I use it at least personally. So then we're getting into some more complex teas and more specific products after that point. So I think I will focus on the teas next. Some of these are used in conjunction with each other. So I'm going to pull them over here and we'll start with the easiest, the easiest one. So obviously I have a lot of just regular everyday teas that, that taste delicious and you can find those on my website. Today I'm just focusing on the things that have more of a holistic healing side to them, things that I have blended myself that, um, that aren't just taste good teas and aren't just like you know, feel good products. These actually have a purpose to help balance your wellness and your health other than just making you happy. So Chocolicious um, Covered Cherry Tea is one that is an energy boosting and just comforting tea. So it can also be used as like a little bit of a passion starter, a little bit of an aphrodisiac and a little bit of a um, supporting the sacral chakra type tea. So this is called Chocolicious Covered cherry tea and um, it's just it just tastes delicious it tastes like cherry chocolate so um, the next teas that I'm gonna move into the reason I was talking about feel-good teas is that I want to talk about um, 
kind of anxiety and stress and when people might be going through depression, anxiety and stress and helping support that in a holistic way on top of going to see a therapist and a doctor. Um, I fully support people using um, antidepressants and anti-anxiety pills so long as you need them. I think that sometimes the medical field tends to try to get people hooked on medicine and keep them on it long term when it's healthier for your body to try to back off of those things and try to balance things in a more natural way if possible. So absolutely use those products in a crisis moment. I've had to use them in the past and they were very beneficial to me. I um, totally support um, balancing the, the natural field and the western field in the right ways and not putting too much um, importance to one or the other just use what works and what's right for you and don't let anyone use fear tactics to scare you into doing something that doesn't feel right for you on either side so um the next tea that i have is just a feel good tea that um really helps if you're having a stressful day to relax it's warming um can help with circulation and just help getting your temperature up and that is called um uh, chai tea. It's just a regular chai tea. So I have a firefly chai, which is a little bit more spicy, and I have a regular chai, and they're just delicious. I recommend you mixing them with honey. They taste better with honey than with sugar. But I have a regular chai tea that is just a good feel-good tea. I have like mango Cylon and honey bush and red rubios tea. All of those teas are just good for different seasons to help you feel good. They all have nutrients that are good for you, but they're not really like a medicinal tea. So um, right now we're talking more about medicinal teas. I have another tonic tea that has a chai base, but it's called Lemon Balm Chai Lemonade. And you really want to get the, lem the, the recipe along with this. But this is um, tea is really designed to help boost happiness, positivity, and give you hope. It's really supposed to lighten the mood. So um, if anyone comes to me and says that I'm dealing with depression and I just like to support um, what my doctor suggested by um, using something a little more natural, then I um, recommend the lemon balm chai lemonade. And that's just because when you drink it, you're immediately going to get that, that we imbue this with sunlight which may sound a little funky to people, but I do work with the sun and the moon and the energy of the world, and I do care about the spiritual aspects of things. So things that come with herbs that um, that resonate well with the sun get imbued with sunlight as they go in here, and they and I put blessings and work with all of my products before they ever go out on the counter so that they have a good resonance and they have positive vibes as well for those of you that care about the spiritual side of things. So this is Sunlight Infused Lemon Balm Chai Lemonade and it will bring positivity and hope and um, just good vibes into your day if you're on it. So um, what I usually tell people to use along with that is called heart tonic tea. And heart tonic tea is a very, very versatile tea. As it says, it is supportive of the heart chakra um, mostly, but the heart runs everything in your body. Your heart thumping and beating every day of your life and never stopping, it gets exhausted and it it does a lot of work and so we want to support your heart so heart tonic tea um support supports fluid balance in your body supports the heart chakra it supports the heart it supports the blood system it's um balancing to the blood system so it doesn't um react negatively with like heart medication um if you have had a heart attack or if you've had a stroke or if you've had um any anything along those lines um high, hyper uh i'm sorry high blood pressure low blood blood pressure hypertension um i recommend this um for to support people's energy that are dealing with gout as well as making sure that you have low sugar and no alcohol um that you drink at all when you're dealing with gout. Um, diabetes, this is a good product to help support diabetes. And um, um, 
because stress and anxiety and depression are all centered around wounds in the heart chakra, this can also help with hormonal balancing and with any type of heart-related complaints, emotional complaints. So heart tonic tea covers a wide range of ailments, and it's something that, um, that I recommend everybody use. So um, if you are dealing with anxiety and depression and... Um, um, what am I trying to say? Stress. And you're having crisis moments where it's like absolutely too much to handle, then um, please talk to me about kava kava root because this is a crisis herb with the recipe that comes with it that I highly recommend for crisis moments. Um, if you're trying, especially trying to lessen the amount of um, like Xanax or um, Prilosec or not Prilosec, but um, what am I trying to say? Prozac, Prozac, um, and, and your other drugs that doctors prescribe and stuff. Um, kava kava root is a way that you can, um, help support your healing from, um, those type of energy states um, without having to rely so heavily on prescription medication, at least in my experience and my personal use of these products. So we're getting on an hour and 39 minutes. I hope you guys are having fun and I hope this is um, eye-opening and inspirational. I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm about like two thirds of the way through my product, I think. So I've got a few more to talk about. Um, we've got to decide where we're going next with it. So we've talked about a lot of internal support. I have these two oils here that combine into a single oil that you'll find different they're all kind of in the same category. So basically, um, they're, they're supposed to help with um, the heat and cold, the hot and cold parts of your body, like temperature um, management for healing. So, um, and also for anti-bruising and anti-pain with like joint pain and for um like uh, bruising, like if you've if you've had some kind of injury that causes massive bruising. So um, these are tinctures, and one of the ones that you'll find on my website is called Sore Muscle Rub, and I may be phasing it out just because of the name. Like the name really tells people like what it's used for, but um, I wasn't really resonating with the name, and I wanted to um, name it something a little bit more fun. And so these are basically Sore Muscle Rub Plus is what ice oil is. So ice oil has a cooling sensation and when you combine it, um, and so sore muscle rub is obviously a massage oil, external use only. All of the tinctures I'm talking about right now are external use only. And um, sore muscle rub and ice oil are for if you have swollen muscles or tension that requires a cooling sensation and massage to help lessen the tension and to potentially aid in healing of um, bruising quicker because they do have comfrey as a base in them. Um, they can also be beneficial. I have had clients that say they're very beneficial for um, arthritic pain and um, nerve pain. And um, lemon drop electrolyte cordial, total side note, but um, nerve pain, this also um, has a lot of nervines in it, which are helpful for that. So um, Ice oil um, is like the cooling part of your icy hot that you would get from the store and fire oil is the warming sensation. So when we put these two together or use them separately, fire oil bl brings blood and circulation to the surface. It can loosen a tense muscle, but you don't want to use it on an inflamed muscle because we want to lessen heat when something is swollen or inflamed. But if it's swollen because it's tense, then you use a fire oil to relax it away. If you want to have the benefits of both, then you buy the fire and ice oil and it's basically just the two oils combined. So those are external oils that work beautifully for massage. 
and for external healing, they all have um, slight healing properties. You don't want to use them directly over the top of the wound. The fire oil you can, but the ice oil you don't want to use directly over like a cut, um, the open part of the wound. What you want to do is you want to rub it around the wound to help support the tissue that has been like bruised or crushed or damaged around there. Um, broken bones, you can gently um, rub that without moving the bone. After you've had it set by the doctor, you can rub those oils to help um, speed up the healing process. Um, at least traditionally, that's how they were used. So moving into um, some really, really specific, more crisis teas. Do I have, I have tonics over here as well. Um, these teas were blended specifically for a specific purpose. So if you're more like in a branched past session as opposed to a wellness past session with me, these teas might be prescribed for a specific energetic condition that you're having circling around a specific part of your body. So black fire um, rose tea is to help with circulation. It's to help get the warmth up in your body if you have a cold a cold system and you just can't seem to stay warm. Black fire rose tea helps with circulation and just helps get the warmth in your body and your internal energy. Like if you have like a slow moving circle of your solar plexus, then black fire rose tea is just a delicious supportive tea for your circulation in your your physical body and in your your energetic body as well then i have um a hibiscus high tea and the hibiscus high tea is is opposite of that it's a cooling herb it gets your digestive juices slowing and your solar plexus slowing so people that are dieting and trying to lessen their appetite and want to slow down their drive and not be driven forward so much um, in their life and maybe they're constantly working like they're workaholics or they're constantly doing if you're wanting to slow down your metabolism and chill a little bit and even just to help with dieting so you don't have that voracious appetite um, then and you can take hibiscus high tea for that and it helps a little bit now to understand herb, herbs and natural remedies are potent they are powerful but some of them you have to take over a long period of time if you have a chronic problem and you've been dealing with this for years and years and years and years it's not going to be resolved overnight you have to pay attention to the subtle differences and be very regimented about taking these how they're meant to be taken and communicate with me so that we can adjust um, the, the amounts and the frequency of you taking them if you don't find have an effect happen over a certain amount of time. If you've been dealing with this like your whole life or over a year, um, it may take up to a year to balance things. It may take up to three years to balance things if it's something you've been dealing with for a long term. If it's an acute problem um, or a, cr a crisis problem, you should see an immediate effect. Even if it doesn't resolve it immediately, the energetic part of it, you should notice an immediate energetic response to the crisis products and to the, what I call the herbal first aid products, okay, the emergency products. Um, those things you should you should have some immediate relief from the emergency products if they're going if they're actually working and the um, the crisis herbs you within seven days you should see a noticeable a noticeable change after using them but it still may take several uses of them to really get you balanced this is not an easy button like a pharmacist prescribed drug where you're gonna take one pill and and you know immediately have this crazy effect from it. You will notice a difference, but you have to pay attention to your body and you have to make life changes, diet changes. You have to respect what actually caused the problem. Maybe come to sessions with me, like wellness path sessions, um, to, to take holistic sessions, to get to, to pinpoint where the problem's coming from, not just 
treat the symptom, but find out what the underlying cause is. And I will suggest going to a therapist. I will suggest going to a physical trainer or a doctor or a spiritual support network. On top of coming to see me, we want to get to the heart of the problem so that you don't ever have to deal with this again, so that life gets better, so the path that you take is different than the one that came before. You can't keep following the same patterns, the same well-worn patterns, even if they're comfortable, and keep doing the same things and expect different results. You have to make big changes in your life and be patient. Be patient with yourself and and honor those changes and stick with them responsibly for them to ever have a chance to balance your system. So as long as you're willing to do that, then, then these products can be very, very powerful for you. So the next tea that I have is called Whirling Wizards Tea. It's a really beautiful tea with its calendula and cone flowers and everything in there. It has a cranberry flavor and this tea is supportive to the urinary tract and um, and the um, and your bladder. So um, something that that you might consider using um, if you're having any kind of urinary problems during a pregnancy, or if you're just prone to um, to your to bladder infections, then um, it's something that you can take in a tonic way to help just support that part of your body. Um, I also make a chronic version of this, but I won't um, sell it regularly without somebody having come come to see me for a regular session so I know your specific condition because the herbs that go into the crisis version of this tea need to be used responsibly. So if you are not finding relief from Whirling Wizards, then contact me and contact your doctor and we can get you on a crisis tea, um, a seven dose blend or a seven day dose blend, sorry. So, um, the next tea that I have is called Tea of Wisdom. So this tea has a large amount of different types of herbs in it, um, but one of the main herbs in it is ginkgo biloba, and um, it is a tea that is supposed to um, support your nervous system. Um, so if you have any type of pain in your body that is nerve-related, or if you have any memory problems like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, um, dementia, um, even just if you're studying for, for exams for college, um, this is an intellectually supportive blend of herbs that have been used, um, especially in Ayurveda and Chinese medicine over the years, um, to help, help boost cognitive function and to help with meditation. So um, it's called Tea of Wisdom, and um, it's, it's delicious. They're all good. So um, that's one that you could look into if it's something that you're interested in. So um, the next tea that I have is called um, Medicine Man Tea, and this is a crisis tea. So it's a tea that you want to take responsibly. It's powerful. There are over 58 herbs in this bag, this little tiny bag, and they're all made to powerfully support um, joint health. So um, joint and tissue health, like connective tissues, like ligaments and tendons um, for like... Uh, when you have something like a uh, tennis elbow or um, runner's tendon, when you've pulled um, a muscle, you've damaged muscle or tissue, you've had a bone break, use it. You can use it in conjunction with the fire and ice oil um, massaged externally. Um, this is a seven day tea. So this is one of those teas that is, is extremely powerful. So you could take one cup of this and get everything that you need from one cup cup of this and um, maybe even need to dilute it into, um, a, some people find this a very potent tea. So some of my clients will take a cup of tea, pour half of it into another cup and dilute it with more water because it's been so energetically potent to them. So this tea supports powerful um, healing of the physical energy body. So um, 
your body's tissue um, will love you for this tea, but you don't want to overdo it. The most you want to take is a seven day um, stint of it. And then you want to rest for at least seven days before taking it again, because it can um, be hard on your liver and your kidneys. So do not take this tea if you have um, any deficiencies with your kidneys and liver. But other than that, um, you don't want to give it to elderly people or children. But um, other than that, it's, um, it's a very powerful and wonderful tea to have on hand for soft tissue, ligaments, bones, arthritis, things like that to support that energetic healing. The last tea in that line that I have, this is the tonic version of it. I do have a crisis version of this tea, um, but again, I won't sell it online currently unless somebody has been taking a session with me. So um, because the herbs, again, can be toxic to our filtration organs if you abuse it and take it too long. So this, this one, however, can be taken tonically. It does have grass herbs in it. It's called Dragon Tamer tea and um, it's mostly supportive to your filtration organs especially your liver your spleen and your pancreas so they're all connected they um, they filter different things inside of your abdomen but they're they're all connected and when one has problems the others have problems so um, this can also help with problems with the gallbladder so if you want to support that type of um or that part of your system inside of your body you've been feeling a little achy under here you feel like you have some problems with your digestion or you feel like you're getting that sludge that doesn't quite equal into gallstones but you can tell that you're having that 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 sharp pain underneath the back of your shoulder blade or you're feeling like you're having sluggish digestion then dragon tamer tea um can potentially help with that one of its main ingredients is um um, holy thistle and milk thistle powder, which are extremely supportive. So it can also help energetically with people that have a lot of anger and rage issues that have a lot of temper and a lot of held like aggression, not from trauma, but from like just, just a lot of anger that they're holding in their liver area. So that's dragon tamer tea. And, um, that completes almost all of my teas. What I have um, separate from, from those that I probably will do a completely different video about is um, my hormone balancing teas for women. So I'm just going to briefly touch on them here. Um, so I have two teas that are used in conjunction for women that are that are in that time of their life that are going through menopause. And um, one of them is called Flashes Tea. So this is your, your tonic tea for dealing with hot flashes and mood swings and all the things associated with croning. Seventh Raven Tea is your crisis tea to help you balance. So that's your seven day tea that you take as directed and you don't overdo it. So Seventh Raven and Flashes Tea are, are for people that are going through the croning part of their feminine cycle. Um, like I said, I will be making an herbal blend for men, but I just haven't yet. It's like my on to do list, my next thing. So stay tuned for that. Um, the next tea that I have is for people that are pregnant. If you are pregnant, please contact your herbalist prior to taking any herbal remedies because they're, your fetus, your baby, is very sensitive to what you eat and drink. And there are herbs that are abortives that can cause you to lose your baby. There are herbs that can be very beneficial to helping support you retaining your baby and making it full full term to have a very healthy and support and and prosperous birth so um please contact me um before using any products if you are pregnant so um i do have these two teas that i blended that are helpful for pregnancy um, along with the fifth chakra tea which is good for morning sickness this is your first and second trimester tea it's called red chalice and it it's just um, full of nutrients. You would use it um, in plate or with the wild greens powder to help um, 
maintain the nutrients that you need for that growing baby inside of you and to keep your nutrients up. Um, this tea has a massive base of um, raspberry leaf in it and many other herbs, but the raspberry leaf um, is... Um, hugely purported in um, Native American uh, society for helping maintain pregnancy and tone the uterus for that first part of, um, of carrying a baby. So the third trimester in nursing tea is called white chalice. So this is your third trimester and after you give birth and while you're still nursing, you would take this tea um, because it helps them, it helps tone the, the uterus um, for getting ready to give birth, actually giving birth and passing the afterbirth, and then also um, for when you're nursing. So um, it helps bring the milk in and helps the milk be more nutritious to your baby. So that's what these herbs have been traditionally taken for. And um, if you are not pregnant and you're not in menopause, if you're in that in-between phase and you're having trouble um, balancing your feminine cycle and you want to sync with the moon, these teas are part of my moon syncing or Luna program. And I'm just going to briefly go through them without um, touching on them too long. But what you would start out with if you cycle normally and you're um, not a wild woman, then what you would start out with is the dark moon tea. And then you would move into the waxing moon tea. And then the full moon tea. And then the wanting moon tea. So these teas are taken over the course of a month and in different um, ratios. So you want to join my my Luna um, moon sinking um, um, program if you're interested in these teas along with the moon milks and um, seed cycling if you're interested in balancing your hormones and sinking your feminine cycle if you have a lot of mood swings PMS you're dealing with PCOS syndrome um, having trouble um, getting pregnant then um, some of these things can be used um, traditionally to um, to help um, increase your fertility and balance your cycle and even help with birth control if you're not wanting to get pregnant. So you're welcome to call me and talk about those things if that's something that you're in need of. We are getting on to two hours on this video. My goodness, it's going to be everything you guys need to know. Hopefully it doesn't glitch out on me <laughs> and lose everything I just talked about. So, um, Really quickly to finish off um, my sprays here that I make, two things that I didn't mention in my aroma sprays is Banish. And Banish is just like a topical bug and mosquito repellent spray. And I will be making a stronger version of this that has um, clove oil and um, some other things in it uh, that will amp up the properties to help banish even more bad bugs and bad fairies. So banish is another product that I offer. And then I also have, since we were just talking about all the feminine stuff, I have Moonberry Mist in one of my older bottles here. Um, that's all a lovely red color. Um, Moonberry Mist uh, and Citrine are for um, our synergies that I make in sprays and lotions and aroma inhalers. They come in in different forms and um, this specific one is for horm feminine hormone balancing. So um, in any cycle that you're in, if you're having mood swings or you're just a little off, um, with PMS, then um, then Moonberry Mist is is something you can spritz around you, and it'll help take you down a notch if you're ready to like rip your husband's head off or something like that. So, um, all right. So moving into completely different products here, I am really on the downward stretch here. I think we're going to have about like hopefully just another half an hour to this video, um, and. I guess we'll start out with my lotions. So this is a large version of my lotion container. Most of them come in the smaller container like this with the little seashells on them. And um, natural lotions are wonderful because they have natural emulsifying wax in them, no parabens, no petroleum-based um, emulsifying waxes, no chemical preservatives. They have 
a slightly shorter shelf life and you do have to read my website and not inoculate them with your own personal bacteria. So you want to use a clean hand or a clean spoon before you use them to put them on yourself so you don't cause any bacteria or molds to grow on them. If they turn color, you want to make sure that you rinse the containers out. All of my containers are reusable and recyclable, so you can return them for me to refill them with product, I would prefer you do that because it's nicer to the environment and to the earth. So this is if, I don't even know if the camera will let me focus on the cream inside of there. But this is my natural lotion. So they come in different scents for different properties and I'm gonna read that off for you guys. But Basically, you want to keep those in a cool place. My mom stores hers in the refrigerator, but they can tend to dry out like that. You can put it on your hand and add water to your hand if you like them thinner than how they come in the bottle. So the Synergy blends that I, like the scents that I make of the lotion, and what you guys should know is that right now I'm trying really hard to find a natural way to do like a berry scent or a mango tropical and, um, what was the other one? Like apple, things like that. Um, we get really um, brainwashed by um, corporate America. And some of those scents that you find in Bath and Body products are actual like major amine chemicals that are not necessarily healthy for you. They're not real berry. They're not real blackberry that's in that product. That They're not real apple or real melon that's in that product. It's a chemical that they've put in there that has a scent that smells like melon. So I'm not able to easily make my products smell like melon berry. So um, eventually, I will have some extracts on hand that I can do some more fancy scents with my products. Right now I'm focusing on just making sure that they're healthy and that they don't burn your skin and that they do what they're supposed to do. They do smell good, but they don't necessarily come in... Um, those artificial scents. So um, right now I have Essence, and Essence also comes in a roller ball, which we're going to be moving on to. So these are my triple, triple moon synergies, and Essence is one of the first ones that I ever made. It's for hormone balancing um, and stress relief. So if you're having like anxiety problems, and Essence is a really good um, synergy to reach for. And it also comes in a lotion. So it's like lavender, jasmine, and um, it just kind of like relaxes you if you're using that. Now the roller balls are aromatherapy. What you do with them um, is you take the cap off, obviously, and you would roll it on your wrist or on your palm, or you can put it on your pulse points like you do a per a perfume although it's not going to last like a perfume does these are like anointing oils and you're going to warm it up and you're going to take like three deep breaths and then that's how the aromatherapy starts to work and I'll do another video on aromatherapy but my aroma roller balls are aromatherapy products so the synergies that some of the synergies that are in the lotions and the soaps are also available as triple moon roller balls um, or as crystal aroma roller balls that are supportive to balancing your chakras. I'm going to talk about those in just a second here. So one of the, I've got my phone out because I always, I have so many of them now that I forget some of them. So I do make custom blends for aromatherapy in the lotions and in the roller balls and in the aroma um, inhalers that we talked about earlier and in some of the aroma spray bottles. So if you're just wanting like a spritz for around the house, like like an aroma spray or something around the house that's more natural instead of having all the chemicals in it, then let me know and I'm happy to make that for you. So for your specific energetic needs. So the ones that I have pre-made are called um, Essence and obviously the Soothe Song that we had put aside for like sunburns and things like that. Soothe Song is also emotionally relaxing and calming if you're having a lot of stress in your life. I also have Nectar as a lotion and an aroma ball. And 
Nectar works best as a lotion because it's kind of um, a blend of colloidal oatmeal and honey. It's very hypoallergenic, low scent. So if you react a lot to scents and um, you get allergies from, from some of these products, like from you have like a flower allergy, you have allergies to grasses, um, or you're sensitive to acids, like if, a, if something has not been pH balanced or has not been neutralized, some uh, I'm going off on a tangent. Some people that make aromatherapy products and make these natural products are not very educated yet and they don't know how to neutralize skin sensitizing ingredients in their products and so they can cause irritations like rashes on your skin or they can make you sensitive to the sunlight where you get burnt from the sun easier. So all of my products are balanced with beta carotene and other things, natural beta carotene, to help Help, um, to help make them not skin sensitizing and less allergenic. But I also on my website have everything listed. So if you do tend to have allergies, you can look for the hypoallergenic products. And um, nectar and white rose are those. So nectar is soothing to really, really dry skin. Um, it has pomegranate and um, oatmeal for remineralization. It's got olive oil. So if you have really oily skin, you don't want to use nectar, but you would use it if you have dry or older skin because it's going to help with wrinkles. It's going to help protect from aging and help with dry and damaged skin. Um, white rose is also hypoallergenic. It's something that's a very feminine lotion for feminine balancing, and it's also really, really good for like like on babies and kids so that you're you're not putting something on their delicate and new skin. Um, white lotus is for meditation. It helps um, with your third eye and your crown chakra. Uh, tea time is joint and respiratory supportive. Um, Deep Woods at Midnight is um, an antifungal lotion and it also helps with like being sultry, meditative, but also in that deep, deeper like root and sacral chakra level with your energy. Um, lemon drop um, is very supportive, um, anti-anxiety and anti-stress and anti-depressive. So it's very lightening and happy and hopeful and it just, it, it brings the vibration up. It smells like, like um, vanilla and lemon. So citrine is a hormone balancing um, to complement moonberry mist, the moonberry mist spray. C the citrine lotion is um, um, hormone balancing, especially for people in menopause um, or, pre or pre or perimenopause. Um, happiness is again a very like thought invoking and positive um, lotion. It's lemon and thyme and it again just raises your vibration to a higher level. Um, creamsicle is very um, comforting and um, just puts you in a good mood. It's orange cream. Um, I do make banish in a lotion but I usually recommend it um, as the spray over the lotion. Um, strawberries and cream is appetizing, so it's a really good, um, a really good lotion if somebody's going through chemotherapy or has just gotten better from an illness and needs to get their appetite up. It also, um, is just about friendship. It's like, it's a really good kids lotion or if you're like giving it to a friend because it just, strawberries are all about happiness and vanilla is appetence. So um, it's called strawberries and cream and that's one of my lotions. I also have Chocolicious, which is a, another uh, like sensual and um, sacral chakra um, lotion where citrine and happiness are more of like a solar plexus. Um, Paradise is a ginger lily lotion. So if you want to just pretend like you're on a vacation um, energetically when you still have to stay home, Paradise is a lovely lotion for that. And then we have a desert almond, which is a for oily skin. If you 
have oily skin and you need a drier lotion, um, Desert Almond is um, is very deserty smelling and um, it's uh, it's for oily skin. So I do have natural liquid Castile soap. I do make a natural shampoo and two conditioners um, that the that are still kind of in the beta process as far as packaging. They work wonderfully, but my packaging on them is still like um, in the works on figuring out what I like the most on them. So I have um, just the natural regular herbal conditioner and I have a pH hairspray balancer to help close the cuticles down after you hydrate um, with that herbal conditioner. And then I make a conditioner called Sacred 8, which is a leave-in conditioner and a healing and remineralizing for like protein um, and other minerals that your hair needs. So. Um, I'm kind of rushing along because I'm at the end of my of my time that I wanted to put on the video here so I can still upload it to Facebook and YouTube. So quickly, quickly, what I have left on my product list is just Hallowed Home, which this is not the container that it's going to come in. It's also in beta testing. Hallowed Home is a cleaning spray. Obviously, you still want to use bleach um, based cleaners if you um, if you have a really high level pathogen um, in your house but hallowed home is a natural cleaner that I do sell that you could use my video is getting a little glitchy I'm going to stop this very soon so I don't lose it Let's see there we go okay sorry guys I'm not sure if the computer's overheating, if we're having internet problems. I'm going to lift up on the computer a little bit so we get through the rest of the video here. So, I wanted to talk about natural cleaners, but I might need to talk about that in another video. Let me talk about my rollerball line really quick. And if the video doesn't get too glitchy, we'll talk about the hallowed home a little more at the end. Um, really quick, I'm going to roll, ro roll through the rollerballs that I have. I have a nine series set of aromatherapy rollerballs, which you can get in a aroma mist form or you, if you ask for them um, personally off of the website. Um, or you can order the rollerballs. And these are essential oils that are aromatherapy, uh, aromatherapeutically supportive to your chakras. So they go all the way from the star seed to crown, third eye, um, throat, heart, solar plexus, um, sacral chakra root, and earth seed. And those aroma rollerballs are used to just support the healing and energetic um, principle of each energetic chakra around your body. And then I also have two oils to work with the outer sheath of your aura that are called Meditate and Spirit Walk that help for doing just that. And then I also, I know I'm rushing through this here, but it's because my video is a little glitchy on my computer and I don't want to lose the end of this. So we've got Hope and Happiness are also used to bring your vibration to a higher level. So you can explore those roller balls on my website and those are basically just used to to treat your spirit. They're very spiritually supportive for either the chakras or for your outer aura that surrounds your body to bring it into harmony and to help it heal when you're using your exercises that we go over inside of the crystal aroma sessions, inside of the wellness path, the branch path, etc. The higher level classes and um, sessions that I teach and give. So those aroma roller balls are are something that I highly recommend if you're doing any type of energetic work um, and essence also comes in a roller ball to help relax and bring you back down to a calm level so that you can start with that process so lots of aroma roller balls um, for my aromatherapy 
And the aromatherapy also comes in the um, aroma inhalers and the aroma sprays. If you order a custom one in that synergy, um, it all kind of crosses over to just what type of product, what um, what application are you going to use it for and what how it works best for you, whether you get a rollerball or whether you get an inhaler, whether you get a spray that you're going to spray around the room, or whether you get a little synergy in um, like an essential oil um, synergy bottle that you're going to drop into um, into like an aroma diffuser, an air purifier, or into an aroma burner. Um, just let me know like what what you're thinking on how you're actually going to use it at home. What do you think is going to work best for you? And then I can make up that synergy in whatever form you need. So they're pretty versatile. Um, some of the oils like don't work well in a lotion because it it will break the emulsion of the lotion or it will cause the lotion to turn. So some of the some of the synergies aren't available in lotion form, but in general, most of them have some versatility as scents to be used um, throughout my products. So same with like the Castile soap. I can make the Castile soap um, for you or your shampoos in many, many different scents so long as you don't have a sensitive scalp or sensitive skin that it's going to hurt for you to be rubbing it all over and so long as it's not an oil that causes sensitivities over long-term use. So um, yeah, just message me if you have any questions about the products. I know this is a ton of information. I don't know if anyone's going to watch this all the way through, but maybe you can fast forward to parts that like that interest you. Um, I've literally two more products sitting on the table here that have to do with um, healing of the supporting healing of the energetic and physical body. So the first one is that I have a crystal caves deodorant. If you'd like to get away from those aluminums and other negative baking soda sources that can toxify your lymph nodes under your arms. I have a natural deodorant that I make and we can come back to the hallowed home cleaner. So a lot of your cleaners in your house are just chock full of chemicals that are antibacterial and antibiotic and antiviral. Well, Anti means against and bio means life, so they are killing life. Yes, we are a very large form of life that is very resistant to a lot of these products and these chemicals that we use, but it doesn't mean that it's not to some extent bombarding our body with things that are killing the parts of our life that make up our body. So like every little cell that comes in contact with some of these cleaners and chemicals and preservatives are being toxified and being killed by an antibiotic and antiviral. So you don't necessarily need to constantly bombard yourself with chemicals that kill life. Sometimes what you need to do is bring positive herbs that create a stasis, that bad bugs, harmful bugs, harmful viruses, harmful funguses, har harmful parasites, and harmful bacteria can't grow on, can't proliferate on. Sometimes you just need to make an environment that makes it hard for them to live and inoculate your environment with positive bacteria, positive funguses, positive viruses that don't harm you, that don't cause sickness. So that concept is going to go into a lot of my preservatives and go into a lot of my cleaning um, products that I make um, over the years to come. And my first product in that home cleaning line was the Hallowed Home that I mentioned that um, will be coming in a spray bottle. Probably not this spray bottle, but something that's a little nicer looking. But right now that might be what's available. So um, again, Hopefully you guys can overlook the packaging that I'm able to send stuff in at this stage in my journey as my business grows and look to the fact that the products actually work and they work amazingly well and they're healthy for you. So Hallowed Home is... Um, 
is a natural way to clean your house so long as you don't have high level super bugs that have gotten into your home. Obviously you're still going to want to use something like a bleach to get rid of like a black mold or a fungus or you're going to use something to get rid of like a super bug but hallowed home will kill a lot of pathogens and inoculate your house with probiotics and just leave a film of beneficial herbs on the surfaces that you clean with it that will continually keep things from attaching and growing because it's not a harmonious environment for these negative bugs to grow in. So that was the concept behind me developing and making Hallowed Home. And um, I will be moving into making other home, home products down the road. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me take a little double check that I I went through everything on my table we didn't talk about crystals we didn't talk about metaphysical and magical supplies which I do carry like sacred water which is to cleanse your spirit and I didn't go in depth into other products that I bring in from other people like my my bar soaps and things like that which are still natural and holistic and wonderful so hopefully you will do some exploring on your own on my website um, www.mysticmoontree.com and you can click on the store link off of there um, to actually shop for the product or there are PayPal buttons on there right now you can message me or call me I don't always pick up my phone um because I screen my calls but I'm always available via text and via Facebook messenger and I try to respond as quickly as possible I would love to see you guys in sessions so that we can learn how to use these products in a holistic way so that we're not just hammering against a brick wall because you're not also changing things in your life to allow these products to heal you so Hopefully you like um, some of the stuff that I was talking about and um, save up to bring to bring some of it in your life and consider this like a turning point, a change, a positive change on your path and that it's not something that's going to happen overnight and that's okay. You just chip away at it a little at a time and you get a product as you can until you have everything from the line that you feel like you need to bring your body back into balance your energetic feel back into balance um, and become whole and become well. So um, I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting me. Give me a like, give me hearts or thumbs up if you happen to make it through the end of this long, long video. I will be doing more that are not quite as long and extensive. Um, and as I bring on new product, I'll probably be doing in-depth stuff on the individual products. Um, I just, yeah. I thank you guys so much for supporting me. It's um, it's really hard to get out there and just be um, put yourself out there and talk about what you do because sometimes there's a lot of pushback and a lot of criticism. But um, I think I've built a really good uh, family of you guys up here on Mystic Moon Tree, and I just hope that the support keeps coming so that I can keep um, putting the positive healing vibes out there into the universe and helping everyone that I can. So um, stay tuned for more videos and um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!